From majesty in the air to majesty at sea. And at Southampton Docks, we find the world's largest passenger liner, the Queen Elizabeth, preparing for another Atlantic crossing. Yet on days like this, it is the diminutive tug that becomes the center of attraction with an energy and efficiency belying its appearance. And it is upon men like Captain Collingwood of the tug Flying Kestrel that eyes are turned, and on whose competent shoulders rests the responsibility of a safe departure. Seven tugs go into action when the Queen Elizabeth leaves Southampton, three pulling astern, two pulling on the bows, and two pushing amidships, holding her onto the quay. The same two eventually assist in pushing the bows round. Altogether, a gigantic operation carried out with the highest degree of skill and precision timing. The feat of these tugs is emphasized by the disparity in size between the liner, 83,673 tons, compared with the flying Kestrels, 243 tons. the ship's bridge, the tugs get their orders, but the operation is essentially a team one, and depending on their skill. By the way, to give some indication of the liner's great length, could she be placed alongside great buildings, her bow would extend nearly 50 feet beyond the 984 feet Eiffel Tower in Paris, or would extend nearly three times the length of St. Paul's. <laughs> During the half hour before sailing, and the 20 minutes it takes to get the liner from quay to the fairway, the tug crews are hard at it, and hauling in nine fathoms of 12-inch diameter manila rope and 14 fathoms of three and a half inch steel wire is hard work. Try it sometime. A good job, well done. And the tugman can sit back and relax again. In a job that receives little public recognition, they take compensation from the satisfaction a man gets from doing a job well. A noble sentiment in keeping with that truly majestic sight, the Queen Elizabeth.